there's a moment before you go on stage or before they say action where you just surrender to the moment you come into the present and you allow the subconscious creativity to come in and that's what makes it exciting not just for you as a as an actor but what it makes it exciting for the audience as well because it is real it's visceral it's alive Hello and welcome to the very first episode of the Spiritual Psychology of Acting podcast. My name is Jordan Turk, I'm an actor, and for the past two and a half years I've been studying the spiritual psychology of acting with its creator, actor and director John Osborne Hughes. The spiritual psychology of acting is an evolution of the work of Stanislavski, combined with wisdom teachings from the Himalayas and modern psychology. For both newcomers to acting, and working professionals seeking something more, ready to take their acting to the next level. In each episode of this podcast, we'll be looking at the philosophy, principles and techniques of great acting. We'll be sharing and exploring knowledge relating to the actor, the actor's life and what it's like working in the industry. In future episodes, we'll be taking a deep dive into topics such as the art of auditioning, method acting, how to deal with rejection, human zoology and how that relates to acting, and much, much more. But in this very first introductory episode, to get some context, we'll be looking at the background and history of John's work. I sat down for a chat with John to find out what led to the creation and development of the spiritual psychology of acting, and I began by asking him how he first became interested in acting. Uh, so I moved around a lot as a child. Uh, my um, my dad had a job that meant that we would move every few years. And uh, I lived in Cardiff in Wales. And when I was 14, we moved to Hampshire to just outside Portsmouth. And I went to a school called Purbrook Park School. And that's really where my interest in acting began, because we had a that year we had a new it was new into the curriculum that we'd have one one week one class a week which would be on uh, drama and we had a new drama teacher Mr Katner in a new drama studio and uh, we'd all go there for this one lesson instead of English it was one of the English lessons we we uh, he did do various things with us and one of the things he did was one of the exercises he did was that you he just put a box on at the front on the stage and everyone else just sat, sat down watching and then someone would get up and then hopefully someone else would get up and they'd start some improvisation and it would be you know like um someone getting their hair done or uh just something like that something very very simple and they you know hello mrs jones uh how would you like your hair done today and then they'd just start talking and then if somebody wanted to they could get up and they could join in the improvisation there could be another customer and it would just see where it led and it was just really play and I would sit there and I was the new boy at school so I was quite shy and uh, before this I'd only my only real interest had been Liverpool Football Club because my mum's from Liverpool so I was kind of brought up to support Liverpool and um, I had an obsession with punk music and drumming I would I drummed in quite a few bands from about the age of 12 And uh, that was really all that interested me. And then suddenly uh, I got this interest in drama because the improvisation had evolved into a bank situation. There was people there queuing up for the bank to go to the, the till at the bank. And there was the improvisation was I think it was someone asking for a loan and being refused a loan because they were too scruffy. And then some, suddenly this sort of magic happened and I got this lightning bolt that went through me and it was what I know, understand now as an impulse. And I, before I even had time to think about it, I was up on my feet and I had an imaginary stocking over my head and I had an imaginary shotgun. I said, right, get down on the floor. And it's something I'd seen on the telly, you know, and I said, get down on the floor. This is a robbery. And they cooperated. And then someone else got got up and joined in with me and we robbed the bank. And I just felt literally like every part of my body and my whole being had just come completely alive. I felt absolutely exhilarated and I could feel the effect that it had. 
you know, the, 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 the class were really stunned. It was like that was something really good and really exciting. And then from there, he, he invited me to join the new drama club that was happening at lunchtimes, which which quite was for me was quite a sacrifice because I used to play football at lunchtimes. So I would go and uh, go along to the drama club. And then um, he told me that they were starting a, a CSE drama course. And it was the first time they'd had a drama course at the school the following year. And uh, did I want to join that? And he, he said I should come along and join that. So I did that. And we did two years, you know, that sort of, you know, those years are like 14, 15, 16 years old. And one day we were doing a radio class and he, he said that he told me in front of the group, actually, which was, which was quite embarrassing at the time. But he said that, you know, you have what it takes to do this professionally. And up until that point, I always, always imagined that I was going to join the army or or something like that, which was really just a hangover from playing with action men as a kid. And so um, he said that there was a local drama course. And so I auditioned for that and I got in. And really, that's how I got started. And I did I did two years there and uh, I really loved it, played some fantastic parts there. And we had all sorts of classes on different things. And then I took a year out and I just did all sorts of different jobs, um, labourer. A care assistant I worked in a factory and I, have to, I used to have to get up at like 6 30 in the morning in the rain and get on my um mo on my moped and then drive up there it, was, it, was, it wasn't a very nice time but during that time I auditioned for drama schools and the one I chose to go to was ALRA the Academy of Live and Recorded Arts because it had uh, had a really nice brochure had, and it was in a really cool building. It was the Royal Victoria Patriotic Building in Wandsworth on Wandsworth Common. Um, and whilst I was there, one of the and I, and I got I had some really good tutors there. Um, most of them are all I think most of them are dead now. But uh, one of them was uh, Sam Kogan, and Sam Kogan was uh, he used to teach us Stanislavski uh, once a week. It was only an hour and a quarter a week. The class we had there. And it was so different from all the other classes. And he he seemed to have sort of a, some very concrete ideas, actually looking back, quite dogmatic ideas about acting and the craft of the acting. But what was really interesting was he had a language um, which was based on, you know, actions, what we called actions. And he would be able to point out in the class what people were really saying behind their actions and I'd always known that you know what people say and what people mean contradict I'd always had, had an innate sense of, of what that was that someone wasn't telling the truth or what they really meant but what was so fascinating about Sam's work is he had he had a, a language for it a way of describing it which is really the subtext is really you know what what's going on behind the lines and uh, he was the first person that that I heard that explained to me, you know, the, the, the need of um, the study of the mind and what was going on in the mind and through self-observation, uh, what to do there. And I, I trained with him then he when I was in my second year at ALRA, he did a, an intro, uh, like an introduction to what he called science of acting which is, I think is a bit generous because it wasn't really a science of acting. What, what I found out of, you know, through a lot of study with him was it was more like a kind of unproven hypotheses of acting. Um, he had a lot of ideas that were very cerebral, but at least he was clear and logical, but he seemed to counter out the feeling aspect of the actor's work, which is so important. Um, so I, I started doing a, a course with him that was, every weekend so I was doing five days a week at Alra and then on the weekend I was training with him that was all the way through the second year and then um, he said he was going to do his own school he was going to start his own school which he called the school of the science of acting and it was in association with the Moscow Institute of Theatre Arts so we'd get visiting lecturers from the Moscow Institute of Theatre Arts and the Moscow Arts Theatre which was uh, was actually sounds more exciting than it was it was actually quite stuffy sort of, a lot of the stuff and uh, they take very very long breaks um in between classes and it's like they didn't really want to do a lot of work to be honest with you but that was uh, where I, I trained with him as a director for two years and um I had quite a few differences of opinion 
with him as the courses went on and we kind of fell out towards the end, particularly when I started teaching my own classes and hiring his a room in his school to teach them. And then one night, it was the beginning of term, I was in my second year and uh, we were both doing an intro class and in he only got 12 students for his and I got 18. And in my class, there was a lot of laughter. And he said afterwards that um, everyone was wondering what was going on in my class next door. And I could see he just had, he was seeing red, he was really angry. And um, we kind of fell out after that. And I used to ask him, you know, surely there's a spiritual part to this. And he said, there's nothing spiritual. There is no God. I mean, well, what you could, I don't know what, what is God, but he said, there is no God. You know, they've sent probes up into space. There's no heaven there. They've sent satellites. And he kind of missed the point, really, looking back on it. Um, and uh, he was incredibly dogmatic and uh, quite controlling, actually, in the way he was that all the students very, like, they held him in awe and they held him in very high esteem, which often meant that they really feared him at the same time. And it just killed everybody's spontaneity. And then one day he, he showed some work to the front of the, in front of the school and the actors just looked like zombies. They were just trying to hold the thoughts of the character in, in, in accordance with, you know, the way he was teaching. And I just spoke out and said, look, I don't understand how this is ever going to turn into good acting. They're just so self-conscious and that was kind of the end of our relationship, really. And so when I, when I left there, um, I was quite winded by the whole experience. And when I left there, I felt that I'd had a really good understanding of the sort of cerebral processes of the actor. But there was really something missing, you know. And um, then I began studying philosophy and particularly the what's known as Advaita Vedanta philosophy which is the Himalayan, the wisdom teachings of the Himalayan uh, teachings, really, is the ancient uh, Upanishads and the Bhagavad Gita that teaches sort of spiritual principles. It's, if you like, it's spiritual science. And I found along with, with, with learning that, that it was the bits and pieces that I was missing you know, a kind of Zen and the art of acting that, what the, you know, Stanislavski said that through conscious technique, we pave the way to subconscious creativity, which is really the premise of it was the premise of Stanislavski's system and of also the spiritual psychology of acting. And what you want is to create the, the you know, the inner life of the character. And that's a sort of a logical mixes logic and imagination to do that. But then when the, the curtain goes up and when the director says action, you need to be able to then let go and come into the moment and let them let the magic happen. You need to get yourself out of the way. And it struck me that in a lot of these sort of spiritual teachings, it held the essence of how to do that. Of course, they weren't teaching it for actors. I was learning it in life. You know, the application of, of um, what's known as Advaita philosophy, which is the philosophy Advaita is Sanskrit. Uh, ah means not and Dwaita means to. And Vedanta means the knowledge. So it's the knowledge of the not to is the essential spiritual teaching that's behind the spiritual psychology of acting. And I was learning so many things there that I just thought were applicable, particularly meditation. And I began bringing that into the class and experimenting with some of the things that I was learning in the wider world. And, and I sort of rejected what I'd learned from Sam Kogan but I didn't throw the baby out with the bathwater. There was a good, there was a lot of really useful stuff, especially on how to break down the play and analyze the play and uh, the various, various aspects of the actor's craft. Well, it was actually through Sam that I, I came to your class that, you know, there, there is a lot of great work in there. Cause I, I think I, I first heard about Sam Cogan and the science of acting through his book that was written. And uh, I think I probably, it would have been around the time I went to drama school, 2011, 2012. And it, I mean, I, I was devouring as many acting books as I possibly could at that time, but that one really stuck with me that there was something really interesting. There was some great content, but like you say, there was, it was something, there was something cerebral about it that it, I almost felt like I was stupid reading it. And I almost felt like, how do I apply this practically as an actor? I just didn't know where to start. I almost felt like I needed someone to guide me through that. 
which is obviously where where you where you came in and kind of demystified a lot of the the content that was it was uh, that Sam had created and, and you know there is some great stuff in there but it, it is missing something like you say yeah that, it's a it's a great it was a great starting point for the spiritual psychology of acting because of course all of that what you'd have read in that book that really evolved from Stanislavski's teaching um and you'll find the same as i teach the elements of acting and the elements of great acting are really the same as you'll find in stanislavski's an actor prepares attention imagination freeing the body of tensions there's a few more now you know actions and purposes and what i call causal thinking um there's some other other elements of the acting but it was all basically there in stanislavski and what was really interesting i only found out a few years ago is that how Stanislavski himself started was with a book on Hatha Yoga or what they call Hatha Yoga. It's really it's pronounced Hatha Yoga. And that's uh, postures and breathing exercises. And that was the starting point of Stanislavski. Uh, there's actually a book called Stanislavski and Yoga uh, that you, you can buy that explains all of this. And I feel that with the spiritual psychology of acting, that it's, it's really it's gone full circle. Um, Stanislavski changed his mind a lot during the course of his life. Um, he ended up with a system of what he called action analysis. There's an essay by Maria Nebel, who was Stanis who was Sam Kogan's tutor at the Moscow Institute of Theatre Arts, where she goes into uh, Stanislavski's action analysis system. Uh, and of course, you get things like the method that came from really one chapter in the actor prepares, which was on emotional memory recall which later Stanislavski refuted and he said no no my my system is a system of physical action um which I still don't quite know what he was talking about <laughs> but how that's evolved into the course and what I'm teaching is we call those psychological actions which are the kind of underlying um thoughts that are behind the physical actions which I got, I got from Sam. And that was one of the most amazing things about the, what I learned with Sam Kogan was the use of actions and purposes. Um, and so really I've, I've worked to sort of evolve that without throwing the baby out with the bathwater is to evolve what I've learned uh, and incorporate more modern psychology. So I've done a lot of reading of uh, Freud and Jung, et cetera, that, that in the modern psychiatric world have kind of gotten forgotten now it's a lot of it's all about drugs that you know uh psycho psychoanalysis do doesn't exist in the same way as it did then but i went back to a lot of those original teachings and particularly eric byrne who created transaction analysis he 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 was a post-freudian so you get the essence of uh freud's teachings in that but it's kind of refined so I started adding that and then one day i was teaching in new york and someone came up, this is in the mid noughties, and someone came up to me after the class and said, you know, this is amazing. What is this? What was it called? And the words just came out of my out of my mouth. This is the spiritual psychology of acting. And it felt sounded a bit sort of um, cranky or quirky to me at the time. You know, is this like ultimate, you know, it's the quackery of acting. Uh, uh, and I found quite there's quite a cultural shift actually in that since that time that you know things like meditation have become a lot more popular and a lot more widely uh, understood and the value of it has been stood especially when science started noticing that there were noticeable measurable differences when people practice meditation uh, and also now the word spiritual has been sort of uh, demystified i mean spirit really is consciousness you know, consciousness, uh, we define as the intelligent life force that animates matter and is the life of everything. And, you know, according to spiritual philosophy, there's only one consciousness manifesting itself as this entire creation. You know, me, you and every the whole universe is a manifestation of this consciousness. And the basic spiritual teaching um, comes from um, a philosopher called Shankara, who was a Hindu philosopher in the 11th century, who said it quite beautifully. He said that es essentially the, the universe is unreal, meaning it, it isn't permanent. It isn't, um, it isn't there of its own accord. It has a causal agent. 
And he said the causal agent of the universe is what he called the absolute, or in Sanskrit, it's called Brahman. And Brahman literally translated means the origin and expansion. I always think that, that a beautiful image of that is a spiral. You know, a spiral, you have a central point. That would be the, the absolute. And then everything emanates from that central point, you know, the spiral. The spiritual journey is actually following it back the other way, back to the still point, back to the self, which is just, you know, your own being, which is just the witness of, of everything. Right, yeah. And it struck me that really one of the purposes of, of theatre art at its best, what does it do? It raises the level of consciousness. So to give an actor and give to actors and directors some knowledge about how the level of consciousness changes and what inhibits the level of consciousness and how the actor themselves can increase their level of consciousness, what the means are, you know, through through essentially what's known as Raj Yoga. And Raj Yoga is a, uh, a mixture of three disciplines, really. Raj means royal. So this is the royal superhighway to enlightenment or self-realization. And Raj Yoga is, is knowledge. So not knowledge of the world, but knowledge of the universal self, knowledge of the consciousness that's behind it all, which is your own self. Um, meditation. And service. So... So for an actor, for example, if you, you, you know, you're always serving something, are you serving your own ego when you go on stage or are you doing it for the love and delight, you know, for, as an act of love to delight the audience that you create the character beautifully because that's how the play, the meaning of the play is going to be commun communicated. So I saw how this really tied in. And so Shankara said that the universe is an illusion the absolute, the Brahman, is real, which is 180 degrees different than what modern science often understands, is that the universe is real and the concept of any god or causal agent is unreal because it's unmeasurable by science. And then he said there's no separation between the individual and the absolute, that really the individual, each one of us, is the absolute. We are the absolute. We are a manifestation of the absolute. I think of an image of like um, if you've got a, a piece of paper and you put lots of holes in it and then you shone a torch through it, you'd get all these different spikes of light coming from there, but it's all got the same source. So if all the different spikes of light that, that poured out, the, the, the beams, they're all the individuals, but it's all the same source. It's the same consciousness. And so what I became very interested in with the spiritual psychology of acting was was helping the actor on on the spiritual level, as well as the psychological and the and the physical level. You know, there are three realms to our being. There's the spiritual, the psychological and the physical. And I thought, well, any you know, our, our job as actors is to create human beings, human characters. And so all three of those areas need to be addressed. And studying the spiritual is really giving the actors prince, spiritual principles, like we just discussed, you know, that the, the universe is an illusion. The mind is, is a temporary illusion. The body is a temporary illusion. It comes, it's, it exists for a certain time. Then it dissolves back into the absolute, like a, like a wave appears on the ocean. And then it dissolves back into the ocean. But the ocean remains permanent. And in meditation, you get to bring everything to stillness. And you get the realization that you aren't the wave, you are the ocean itself. And there's great power and uh, strength of knowledge that comes through that and confidence that comes through that, which very often, you know, a lot of actors deal with a lot of nerves. So to give them a really integral sense of themselves first, you know, their own spiritual essence and then you create the character, which is a deviation from that. It's like putting on clothes, different clothing or different psychological makeup to create the inner life of the character. And so um, the, the teachings that I've inherited and developed through 30 years of experience uh, have evolved and they continue to evolve into the course that you've studied, which I call the spiritual psychology of acting. Great. Gosh, that was a lot. That was a lot, <laughs> yeah. wasn't it? God, I hardly took a breath there. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it's it's interesting what you say about how 
culturally our perception is shifting and how we accept the kind of spiritual side of, of life a lot more readily than we did in the past. I, I remember hearing something about how mental, obviously mental health has been taken into consideration a lot more these days. And yes, meditation as well is becoming a huge, huge thing, you know, culturally a lot across, across the board. It's, it's almost the same as uh, jogging was, uh, how it became such a, a normalised way of getting exercise. You know, if you were to tell somebody in the 1930s or the 40s that somebody was running, they would say, what from? <laughs> you know, they wouldn't understand that it was it's just a, a part of your own physical exercise. And now, you know, our mental health and our own kind of c- keeping that part of us in shape is now just a huge part of pe- just people's general understanding. And I think it's also important to say that the spiritual side is not necessarily connected to religion at all, is it? It is just connecting to the senses and it's connecting to reality. Well, exactly. The, the, you know, the, the, the religions, as far as I've understood it, is that, that there's a golden thread running through human history of, spirit, of the spiritual that uh, runs through the history of the whole universe, really, is the spiritual aspect to it. And, and uh, we refer to it as the golden thread. And at certain times, certain people have connected with this knowledge this essential knowledge this sort of universal knowledge and then they've dressed it up in a context and form that the people of their own time and culture can understand but then of course like all good things they 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 start to then become concretized and it becomes taken literally rather than symbolically you know behind all the religions are are all these symbols really and um if you can read the symbols, they point to the truth. So, you know, you could either re- read the, the the Christian Gospels as it was about some bloke with a beard and sandals that lived 2000 years ago, going around literally walking on water. Or you can start to explore the, the symbols. What does it mean that actually really in the narrative that the Jesus is your own true self? And it's about the potentiality of the self and things like walking on water is really an analogy of faith that if you have faith in yourself you know your your real conscious being going through life is rather like walking on water so you know do you see what i mean so the whole thing is full of it's it's the truth but it's dressed up in a literal form and then of course you the, the the you get the concretization of it and it becomes literal and that's where you get the whole, you know, my religion's better than your religion, my religion's right, your religion's wrong, and you get the situation that we have today. And as a result of it, you know, there's been a, a huge increase in atheism. Um, people say, you know, I'm a scientist. I, you know, if you, I'll, 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 I'll believe it when I see it, kind of thing. Right. Yeah. And so you get these two camps. You get the religious dogma on one side, and then you get the atheists on the other. But then I see it that evolving between those two, that polarity, the central point is what we could call spirituality. And someone who's interested in spirituality isn't interested in worshipping a God. That's always been the the, the stuff of religion is worship of God, you know, like prostrating, which if you if you study uh, zoology, it's really appeasing the great ape. That you look in primates, you know, when 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 the the the, the uh, dominant ape, you know, wants to put one of the uh, one of the ones that's being too frisky, or you know, he's he's doing things he shouldn't do, and he gives him a threat signal. What the um what the ape does is they bow down and they show that the the, the uh, um, alpha male they show them their bottom, and they prostrate. And this is really, this is worship. And it's really, you know, worshipping the super ape, God. And the person who's interested in spirituality and, you know, how I guide my students, it's not about worship. Uh, The person who's interested in spirituality is about knowing the absolute as knowing it. It's not about worshipping it. And the absolute can only be known as your own self within. It's found within. And once you find it within, you find it without. You can see it out everywhere that every all the forms of the universe are a manifestation of the absolute. And then you then there's a unity 
And, you know, in the theatre, that's something that, that the audience want that sense of unity. And when you have an actor who has connected with that uni unity within, that universality, their own real self, you know, the gold in their own heart, and they come in front of an audience, they shine. And that, what do they shine with? They shine with consciousness, you know? And if, if they've, you know, understood it and they've lifted their own level of consciousness, we call this charisma or stage presence. You, they have presence. They bring the audience into the present. It's not the character. It's the actor's own being. And then that gold that's in the actor's heart is also in the audience's heart, that union. And yeah. so they connect with it, you know, on a very deep level. You know, it goes beyond words. And um, there's great love in that. And that itself raises the audience's level of consciousness because it brings them back to the universe, the unity of humanity. You know, every everybody has a kind of, um, you know, the basic human neurosis is that I'm separate. Uh, there's everybody else and then there's me, you know. I'm sure you've had that in your life, Jordan. You've known that thought. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I think that that's... That's a key thing you've brought up there in terms of the great power of an actor is their humanity. It isn't the ability to show off. It isn't the ability to to play, you know, characters really well or to shout and scream, you know, that like you can get very intense performances that people are drawn to. But I think more than just a natural ability to perform, it is the connecting with that actor's humanity. And that's what makes you like or dislike a certain actor is that charisma and that light behind them. Yeah, uh, it's exactly that. Um, yeah, the the good acting, as far as I'm concerned, is creating the mind of the character, creating the you know the the, the psyche of the character, the subconscious and the conscious thinking of the character. And then allowing that to operate and work through the actor's voice and body naturally. And, you know, the actor has to get themselves out of the way to be able to do that. And to be able to do that in front of an audience or camera crew without their own neurosis, their own fear, their own what we call unfinished thinking, getting in the way of the process. You know, their own baggage yep. getting in the way of the process. So that's what inhibits great acting is the actor's own baggage, usually. Great acting. So that's good acting. Great acting is the same. But what makes it great is it's lit up from within. It's imbued with this consciousness. And some are born with it. You know, they're born with this thing. You know, I, I, uh, you know, if there's there's reincarnation, then it is it's something they probably developed in in previous lives. I don't know, but some people have it. It's innate. But to have an acting course, you need to be able to address these things and deal with it and understand what they are, so that the the actors themselves, the spiritual work, is they can work on their own level of consciousness. Hello there, my name is Paul Blackthorne. I've done quite a bit of acting in the past, been quite fortunate, but to be honest, I don't think I would have done any of it if I hadn't have spent two years sitting down with John Osborne Hughes, studying his psychological, spiritual acting course with him. You have the opportunity to do that online. There's all sorts of subscription offers and stuff. Please go on to that, spiritualpsychologyofacting.com. Please, if you want to learn to act, that is the geek go-to place to go to. So you talked there about the difference between a good actor and a great actor. What do you think are the top three most important qualities of a great actor? Oh, uh, to narrow it down to three. I mean, there's quite a number, as you, as you learn on the course, there's a number of different qualities of an actor and we go through those in detail yeah uh, in the course so that you know and, and we discuss them on the course so we can define them and understand what they are so you realize that you can practice them and you can develop any of the qualities of an actor but to answer your question i would say the three most important qualities of an actor are number one awareness 
Number two, imagination. And number three, spontaneity. Awareness is the ability to watch your own thoughts. It's to, you know, we all have our thoughts. The thoughts are going on constantly. But awareness is when you can step back and you can see your own thinking processes in a more objective way. But in fact, awareness, really, the self conscious, which is pure consciousness, is awareness and awareness is consciousness. It's the same thing where there's consciousness, there's there's awareness. But looking at it as a as a quality, as a definable quality, it's the ability to watch your own thoughts. And an actor needs that because, well, first of all, you need to see what's getting in the way. Um, you need to see, you, you know, when you're going into the actor's thinking, when you're on stage or on set, uh, what you're thinking about your own, you know, need to be liked or please the director or be admired or um, take revenge on people from the past or whatever the, the other motives are going on there. So you need to have awareness to be able to sift through all of that. But also through learning awareness and being able to observe yourself, you're really, you know, I say to the students uh, on the course in the first lecture that you are a walking laboratory for what it means to be a human character. So that's why the first thing we get to do on the course is study your own character you know what are the laws of character creation which are really the laws of cause and effect it's how you know you have past situations and how they lend themselves to the present and how they make your choices uh for the future and that writes your life for you it's it's really learning those things and so as an actor i say that the um the duty of an actor is to observe human nature and which is to observe yourself first of all and then because as the roman uh, playwright and philosopher terence said nothing human is alien to me or as the spiritual philosopher american emerson he said that there's one mind common to all individuals meaning that we're all an inlet to universal mind and so by studying what's going on in you, all those properties exist within you. So that's the first port of call for an actor is, is a study of their own self, an objective, non-judgmental. I mean, that's really important part of it, that there's no criticism and there's no judgment. You just have a, to have a real spirit of inquiry. It's like, mm, why is that? Why did I say that? Why did I feel uncomfortable in that situation? Or why am I having these feelings or thoughts? And... If you do that as an actor in yourself, what's going on in other people starts to become transparent. You start to see other people's thoughts and why they're doing what they're doing, because we're not so different after all. And then as an actor, you're gathering material. And rather than having to resort to cliche or just think about how am I going to say this line or how am I going to say this line to sound the most authentic or sound the most impressive, you're then actually got material that you've seen through real observation and you can bring that into your character i remember hearing a story once about marlon brando that he would be someone was watching him at a party and he was listening talking to someone and the person i think started to, to, like like would scratch here would scratch their eyebrow and then marlon would um you'd see him like in a quiet moment like doing it himself like trying it on what was that like yeah uh, and then the next day on set, he'd incorporated it into the character. So it, that was a uniquely observed moment that he'd got from just his own awareness of observing, you know, his own interest in, in, in human beings and why they do what they do. And I think that that's the first one is, is awareness. The second one, uh, imagination, is, of course, you know, that's that's your that's what you're painting with, you know, a painter paints with paints um a sculptor has clay you know to make their sculpting from or stone what's the substance out of which we create a character it's your own imagination which is thinking in pictures according to the scottish philosopher david hume he said that imagination simply defined it as thinking in pictures um but there's more to it than just pictures because the pictures you know if i say to you that I had an orange for breakfast 
or I ask you what you had for breakfast. What, what did you have for breakfast, Jordan? I had porridge to do, like a true Scotsman. <laughs> that, that's, that's a proper Scottish <laughs> breakfast, that one. And was it salt or sweet? Oh, sweet. Has to be a bit sweet. sweet. And how did you sweeten it? Oh, with fruit, with uh, raspberries and blueberries and a touch of honey. And a touch of honey, you naughty boy. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, in porridge, if you put a little bit of salt, even when it's sweet, if you put a bit of salt, it's even nicer. That's that's oh, uh, my that's tomorrow's breakfast tip from the top. Just a little pinch of salt add something it makes it like you know like a digestive biscuit it's got that salt and sweet it makes yeah. the porridge it's, it's got a, that Perfect anyway balance. we digress <laughs> um that when you said that porridge and you said raspberries and blueberries you saw pictures of it mm. and that's really what's the inner world of the character is made of creating the, these pictures the meaning of a word is the picture that's behind it if i say to you the word penguin uh it's um you get a picture of what it is you know you see that mm -hmm. black and white creature that that can't fly that goes in the arctic we see on the david attenborough program goes through all the 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 the, the 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 rain and the snow to go and get a belly full of fish to bring it back to its young we see you know even as i'm speaking there we're seeing those pictures so that's what the inner world of the character is and i see the imagination is like a muscle that can be developed um through practice of adding more sensory data to the pictures because that's what really makes the acting interesting is when when the actor sees pictures the audience see pictures and that, that is, it's an unconscious process but the audience see pictures if the actor doesn't have any pictures and they've just really the only pictures they're seeing are the pictures of the the, the you know the the script with their their lines marked in yellow marker then you're, you're giving the audience blanks. And what makes the, the, the performance really compelling is when the actor actually has the pictures behind what they're saying, what they're describing. And that's what brings the audience's sensory imagination to life in the theatre. So that's absolutely paramount. And spontaneity is freedom. It's just the freedom to, to act uh, without inhibition, mm -hmm. um, without fear without self-doubt and those factors that create the fear and the self-doubt very much on the course we look at those what are they they're usually to do with your own self-image and who you think you are and your own perceived problem with yourself and your own rejection of yourself you know and so it's important for an actor to nurture a kind and loving relationship with themselves that's where the sort of um, thou shalt not criticize comes in and mm. to be sort of forgiving especially it, it, as an actor if you want to do it properly you have to delve into the human psyche into your own psyche and some of the stuff you might find in there might not that be that palatable to yourself you might be you know a bit ashamed of it um but that's how you really learn you know you by by seeing those things and addressing those things your own insecurity and your own need to be liked and these are the things that really get in the way of the creative process and so the spontaneity is really just freedom it's the ability to think what you choose to think in the moment to follow impulses you know through conscious techniques dan Slasky said as we were saying earlier we pave the way to subconscious creativity we can't get the subconscious creativity, you know, if it just stays at, um, with the conscious technique, you get a sort of Sam Kogan situation that they all kind of look like zombies trying to think the pictures. But you have to be able to, what I say to the actors is let go, let flow. Mm. So let go of the brakes, you know, like when you're riding a bike downhill as a kid and you're putting on the brakes all the time because you don't want to go too fast because you're worried about coming at the end. Or you can just let go of the brakes and let the force of gravity take you. You just go, wee. <laughs> it, it, it's rather like that in, in acting is that there's a moment before you go on stage or before they say action where you just surrender to the moment. You come into the present and you allow the subconscious creativity to come in. And that's what makes it exciting, not just for you as, a, as an actor, but what it makes it exciting for the audience as well, because it, it's real, it's visceral, it's alive. Yeah. Um, and the, the spontaneity is natural if you get the, the inhibitors of the spontaneity, the fear and the self-doubt, et cetera. If you can get them out of the way, and obviously on the course, as you probably saw, 
we um, we look into those. What are the patterns of thinking that inhibit the creative process? And you know, there's a lot of reflection that the actors do on their own lives. A lot of homeworks on on analysis of your own thinking, in order to really be free. You know, to be able to just act spontaneously in the moment, to have the character's thoughts, to feel the character's feelings, and that will naturally create the movements and the postures and the gestures um so so that those three and so if you if someone is interested listening to this in studying the spiritual psychology of acting what do you want them to achieve through taking the course or or what do you hope to give actors who train with you right so i call the course the spiritual psychology of acting right but really it's just the common sense of acting because all we've done there's nothing artificial this isn't um a method you know, like 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 Strasbourg or Meisner or whatever. They're not they're not methods which you use kind of artificial means to do it. All we've done with the spiritual psychology of acting is take the laws of nature, the laws of psychology that create our characters in life, find out what they are, how does the character evolve, and use the same processes as our acting technique. My teacher, Sam, said he got his definition of acting technique, which I think is a really good one, is that it's the conscious use of usually unaware processes of thought. So first of all, we have to become aware of what those things are, but then we use them. Like, for example, you would have learned about purposes. You'd have learned about causal thinking, self-images. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are, you know, to the most of the population, these things are unconscious and they don't need to be. I mean, you know, you, you, you'd you be a, a better doctor if you had if, if, you, if you had this. But for the most population, you don't need this. But for an actor, it's crucial um, to develop that. So the, the spiritual psychology of acting could be called the, the common sense of acting or even simply acting. <laughs> it's acting. It's pure acting. Uh, is the idea of it but what about you I mean you know what have you learned what you're qualified you've done the course what what did it give you yeah uh well I actually had this recently a kind of a a a real awareness breakthrough um because I'd I'd recently came out of a period of time where it was the longest I'd been without acting work since leaving drama school It'd been about a year and a half between my last acting job and the one I had recently, just before Christmas. But what what struck me was that I didn't it didn't feel like that length of time, and it didn't feel like I was creating any kind of complexes of of failure, or you know, I, I wasn't really afraid of of the period of time that was elapsing. Uh, and I really noticed that my mental health and the kind of the the way I live my life personally has just improved vastly never mind as an actor just my day-to-day existence is just so much better for all the the stuff i've learned but then also in terms of my acting career when that acting job did come up uh you know the audition came through maybe like five six o'clock at night uh the self-tape was to be handed in the next day at 9 a.m so it's a really short period of time quite a specific character breakdown uh, an accent i wasn't particularly comfortable with so there was a lot there a real kind of melting pot of stress, potentially. Uh, and by the time that I'd finished the... got the addition to the time I'd finished the actual job and finished rapping on it, it was less than three days. And there's all the kind of the, the train strikes and stuff. There's there's a, a real kind of... It's not circumstances for in which good acting can take place, really. But on that job, it was the most comfortable and confident and secure I felt as an actor ever. And I realised all the stuff that I'd been learning and, and, and working on the past couple of years had just sunk into a level where it was kind of subconscious, but also it was a real kind of flow state, a real inspirational state that was just there all the time. It wasn't the you know like a muse, it wasn't like it's there or it's not there. It was, I have this strong, like you say, technique, which is accessing my imagination and my awareness. All these things are in play. And it was... It was just, it was at a point in breaking in, in, in filming, they, they were setting up the, the next shot or whatever, and I just had that real sense of, this is what I wanted to feel like when I first went into it, and this is what I thought being an actor was going to be. It, you know, there was no imposter syndrome, there was no um, 
fear of what the director was thinking of me, like you say, all these all these negative actor thoughts that can often come in. I just felt supremely capable and confident, and it was the first time I'd ever felt that in my career, really, where nothing else was getting in the way. And there was no attachment, there was no ego to it. It was just, I'm an actor, I'm doing my job, I'm doing it well. And it was great, it was incredibly liberating and, 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 and freeing. And, and really, it was, it was back to that state, I think, as a kid, that I had that was just pure play and pure enjoyment, which really is what an actor should be feeling. You know, it, at the end of the day, it is a job and you should be able to turn it on and turn it off. But the, the, the purpose of an actor really, I think, is to enjoy it. And if you enjoy it, then everything else will follow. And it was, it was, it was a, an incredible feeling just to kind of realize all this work that I've been doing was there. And I think, you know, that's a great advert for the course. The fact that I'm in this, you know, the best possible place in my personal life. And, you know, of course, you want to be further on in your career, whatever that is. But I kind of feel like I'm really comfortable where I am. And it is, again, it's just that level of comfort that I felt like being an actor, you, you'd have that, you know, internally. Yeah. Well, now you've got knowledge. I mean, not, it yeah. starts with information. We learn the theory. You know, which which I think is uh, I don't say it to flatter myself, but I think it's second to none. The level that the understanding of the theory of acting. Yeah, I've been doing it so long. I can sort of explain it now and I know what's important and what's useful. So it's broken down theoretically. But then, of course, you get to practice it in the classes that so we always have yeah. technique classes. And it's very much like the, um, you know, in Karate Kid, wax on, wax off. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't really know why he's doing it. You're doing these imagination exercises. You're doing these purposes. You're doing these different things. And you're, you're, you're just training your faculties to be able to do these things. And then it all comes together. And yeah. the, the information turns into knowledge when you put it into practice. And once you've got that knowledge, no one can take it away from you. You've got it. You've got the knowledge of how to be a good actor. You know what the, the rules of acting are, what the laws are. What You don't have to invent the wheel every time a self-tape comes in. Yeah. You've got, you know, you know what to do. You have a profession as an actor. And uh, that's that's really wonderful to hear because that's it. And, and you know, and to take it full circle going back to me sitting there as a 14 year old watching them do these uh, improvisations and getting up and pretending to be a bank robber. Yeah. I'd say in many ways, the whole of the spiritual psychology of acting has evolved from that moment and my own personal quest to explore what had happened there and how did it happen? What were the circumstances? I mean, it happened quite naturally, the inspiration and the spontaneity that in that moment, but the spiritual psychology of acting is how do you, is is a system of knowledge that gives you the tools to take you there straight away to put you in that state so that you can have that spontaneity and that freedom and um it, and you're absolutely right it is you know the, the 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 best reason for doing it is to enjoy it if you enjoy it, the audience enjoy it. You know, if you're not enjoying mm -hmm. it, there's no way you can expect people to pay whatever it is, 75 quid for a ticket to come and see you do it. If you're not even enjoying it, they're not, if they're not going to enjoy it themselves, but that's it. And that's, and it's, and then you realize again, that it's, um, it's, a, a, it's an act of love mm. creating the character. You do, you're doing it for, you're doing it for, if you understand that, you know, the higher purpose of it is to raise the audience's level of consciousness. And boy, do we need that in this day and age? We need an uplift of consciousness. You can't fix a problem with the level of consciousness that created it. So humanity has a lot of problems. And to move beyond those problems, we need a higher level of consciousness. So as an actor, you're participating in that process just by simply creating the character with love, the detail, the inner life of the character, and learning how to just spontaneously create it afresh every night or every time the director says action, that um, it's real music to my ears to hear you say that, that you've, you've had that experience because that, that's, that's the purpose of it. Otherwise I'd just be wasting my time. <laughs> well, and also I think it's worth mentioning that when I did take the course, it was uh, 2020. We we're in the middle of a pandemic and, I guess what's interesting about the way the course has evolved in recent years is that how it's instead of being 
face-to-face in-person classes with a group of people. You can now have a group of people on a Zoom meeting. And what must have been fascinating for you as well is seeing how the course does translate and you can do the course you know, from all corners of the globe. I know in, 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 in my acting pod we had you know, and still have actors from America, from all over the world, and yet it still feels like you are in the room because the, the exercises are simple enough to be able to do over Zoom. And the fact that you now have them as recordings that people can purchase, you know, purchase a whole course. And so it must be amazing to see how that, that can now evolve into something that it essentially teaches itself. Yeah, well, that when when uh, people have been saying to me, friends of mine have been saying for years, look, John, you should do these courses online. And I was like, I don't know how it would work online. And then, of course, when the pandemic came, I didn't have any choice but to take it online. And I've mm-hmm. been amazed at how it's worked with the, the whole Zoom setup of doing a class like that. And in some ways, it's even more expedient because I've noticed like in the class, people would take it off, their own purposes would take it off on a tangent. Whereas when you're teaching in Zoom, p- people don't tend to do that. They just tend to stay with the job in hand. So it becomes even more expedient. And of course, you know, a- along the way of teaching all those classes, all that, you know, I taught, I taught three or four different groups through the whole course during the, the pandemic. I was doing a lot of hours teaching and we recorded it all. And it's created all this great material. There isn't, you know, me sitting there in front of a camera talking to an imaginary acting class that is real and live and visceral, that I'm actually talking to real people. So people get that same experience. And I'm told that, you know, whether whether people followed the record the recordings or they would did the live online classes, the result is the same. I'm still talking you through the exercises. I'm still explaining all the principles. And it's really exciting to, for me that, it becomes available now. Anyone in the world, you know, with the, we've got a new spiritual psychology of acting website that's that's nearly ready to go. That we've spent quite a few months on designing it and getting it all really nice, really beautiful website. And anyone in the world who wants to be learn how to act well can join join on the course, and they can they can get all the there's six different modules which takes you through the whole process, uh, everything you need to know to be an actor not the not the professional stuff not the stuff about getting an agent or how to deal with casting directors but the actual nuts and bolts of acting which is often what you know a lot of the drama schools don't really teach they teach all the peripheral stuff you you learn yeah. stage fighting and dance and singing and whatnot uh, and movement but the actual nuts and bolts of acting is that's all i teach is like how to get a script and how to bring that script alive, create the character, you know, how to break it down, how to analyze the character, how to analyze the character in such a way that it serves the play, that you understand the function of the character, you get a sense of what the piece, you know, what are the themes of the piece, what are they actually saying? And you can break it down and it doesn't matter what, what genre, what style, whether it's a theater or television or it's a movie, it's still, you know, there's some slight stylistic things that change there. Like in theatre, the people have to be able to hear you at the back. Yeah. Uh, so there's some, some voice considerations. But really, it's the, you know, making the nuts and bolts of acting available to anyone uh, at any time. And I'm really excited about that. Great. Yeah. Well, I think hopefully that's for those who, the uninitiated, who have, never heard or come across the spiritual psychology of acting. Hopefully that has been uh, a good introduction to it. Um, I think that's probably a good place to to end this first episode. Yeah, I think that's great. And we'll obviously with, with we plan to do a bunch of these podcasts. Yeah, and so we're yeah. going to go further into some of the, a lot of the topics that we've touched on today in this conversation. We're going to go deeper into Absolutely. those and, and I want as well what we do it to be an exploration for ourselves. I don't want to be, you know, I think there's going to be a lot of great content that people are really going to value um, from it. And it's going to answer a lot of questions about the art and craft of acting. But also I want it to, for us that we're going to explore new topics. Um, and I want it to be wider than, you know, all about the actor's life. And also just, um, well, there's three parts there. There's spiritual, psychology and acting. 
So we're going to be looking at all of those three things. And um, we've got a really nice list, haven't we, of some of the episodes that we're already going to be working on. And the next one yeah. we're going to do is on meditation and the actor and why and what the value of meditation. At the beginning of every class, we always start with meditation to get you in the zone and get you free. So then, and then we st- once once arrive back at your own true self and you're in a nice state of ease and relaxation, then we can start um, creating characters and having some fun. Thank you for listening to the Spiritual Psychology of Acting podcast. Please do join us again next week for the episode on meditation. But in the meantime, if you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and subscribe to keep up to date with all future episodes. If you're interested in studying the spiritual psychology of acting, head to the website at www.spiritualpsychologyofacting.com. And finally, thank you to Omid 16 b He provides the music for this podcast. The track is called Love and is available on all streaming platforms.